grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. There has been a lot of weeping in the town of Bethany. Lazarus, the brother of Mary and Martha, and a man who was well respected in the community has died. And for four days, the people have been mourning the loss of this brother and also this very good friend. Verse 32 reads, When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus came after four days to Bethany, and the family was so happy to see him. But still, they were confident. They spoke in faith that if Jesus had been there, Lazarus would still be alive today. So troubled was Jesus when he reached the place where Lazarus was buried, when he saw the weeping of Mary and the Jews who had come to support her, John describes Jesus in just two words. Jesus wept. We know what it's like to weep, don't we? When we suffer the death of a loved one or our kid gets in trouble with prescription drugs he's trying to sell or maybe a loved one is involved in an accident or maybe the surgeon had bad news about the procedure that had been done. It's in those moments when we are tempted to ask, Lord, if you had only been here, we would not have suffered a death, an accident, an arrest, or a failed surgery. It's in those moments when we're tempted to ask, Lord, be here for us. In Psalm 56, 8, David wrote these words to God. You have kept count of my tossing, put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? David is living in exile. He is living on the run. His enemies want him dead. He is suffering greatly during this time. But it's interesting that David is still able to say, in spite of everything that is happening to him, Lord, you have come to be with me. It's, it's, it's as if God has made a note of every sleepless night that David has experienced, that he has kept every one of the tears that David has shed. It's as if God had made a note of every single thing that had happened in David's life. And David can see that God has been there for him. And David is comforted by the fact that he can see the extent of God's great love for him and really for all of his children. Jesus has come to Bethany to be with Martha and Mary, and he was grieved by their sadness. And we too can believe and know that Jesus is grieved when we are in pain. We take comfort in those times when we need him the most that Jesus comes to us. Do you have a person to go to when life is falling apart? Someone who will just sit and listen as you pour your heart out to them? Maybe it's a spouse or a teacher, maybe a coach or a best friend, or maybe someone that you consider to be very wise. For me, it was my pastor, David Schultz. And during my high school year, I, I struggled with a lot of things. And I was very concerned about my dad. He didn't go to church very much. My mother was the spiritual leader in our family. She was the one who got my sister and I to Sunday school. She wanted to be sure that we continued to believe and know Jesus Christ as our friend and our Savior but when my dad passed away, I had a question. Did he go to heaven? I brought that concern to Pastor Schultz, and we talked for a long time. And he pointed out to me that it's simple faith in Jesus that leads to eternal life. And he had heard my dad's confession of faith. 
He assured me that a confession and faith in Jesus was all that God needed to hear. And his words were so comforting to me. Now, in a greater way, Jesus does so much more than that. He is our go-to as well. He is the friend who listens and helps and comforts. But that's just the beginning. Martha said these words to Jesus. They were also said by Mary, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. In fact, I can imagine during those four days, they kept speaking those words to one another. If Jesus had just been here, our brother wouldn't have died. Would not have died. What causes death? Is it cancer or heart disease or lung disease? Is it abusing alcohol or opiates? All of those things can lead to death. But really, the answer to the question is encapsulized in one word, and that's sin. God's perfect creation was broken by sin. When Adam and Eve ate the fruit, our world has suffered from that sin and has been in turmoil ever since. I wonder if when Adam left that beautiful garden, if he didn't say something to himself like, man, am I dumb? We had fellowship with God. We had a beautiful garden to live in. We had the management of it. I should have stopped Eve from pulling that fruit off the tree. And now look, I sweat, I toil every single day just trying to get anything to grow from the ground. And not only that, my family is a mess. Cain killed Abel. You want to talk about crying? I never thought that I would lose a son. It's all because of sin. Death is our enemy, and we hate it. And when death comes to visit us, we weep loud and bitter tears. And Jesus hates it too. What did he do at the tomb of Lazarus? He cried. And his words give us the greatest comfort because they remind us that death does not win. Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me shall live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. We can prove that. Jesus meets a man named Jairus. The man has come to Jesus because his daughter is ill. And even though his daughter later dies, she doesn't stay dead. Because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Jesus meets a woman who is going out to bury her only son. She too is weeping bitter tears. But when Jesus speaks, her son doesn't stay dead. Because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And then there is Lazarus. Been in the grave for four days. Bad odor going to come out of that tomb. Doesn't matter. Jesus speaks and Lazarus doesn't stay dead because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And the same is true for us, whether it be at the baptismal font or, or here at the pulpit where God's word is proclaimed or, or whenever a person kneels at the altar to receive Lord's Supper, Jesus is there. He comes to us. And then Jesus goes on to say to Martha, uh, he who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Now, those words sound confusing. Sometimes people read them and, and they're a little bit confused. What is it that Jesus is trying to say? I remember, uh, or I ask if you remember the old uh, FedEx commercials. What was the tagline to all those commercials? When it absolutely positively has to be there overnight. Well, the truth is that all Christians die or will die unless Jesus comes first. But when Jesus says, shall never die, it's as if he is literally saying, absolutely, positively, you will not die forever. Death will not be the end. Jesus saying is, if a person is connected to him by faith, 
Death will come for only a moment. Death, as Jesus says, is just a sleep. And then in a moment, you and all who believe with Jesus will be in paradise. This is the fifth Sunday of Lent, and throughout the Lenten season, we've focused on the suffering and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. His suffering and death and resurrection is for you. Jesus rises from the dead, and he lives so that we might be buried with him in our baptism and then be raised to life as well. And that's forever. And don't forget, Jesus has given new life to you right now. We need never doubt his presence in our life. You were raised in baptism. And you heard his word that gave you life every time you confessed your sins and he spoke his word of absolution to you. And Jesus meets you here at the rail as well so that he might give you his body and blood for the forgiveness of sins. What sweet words to come from our Savior. Now we don't have to doubt any longer about Jesus' presence in our lives. We never have to say to ourselves, Lord, if you'd only been here, we worry no more about Jesus' forgiveness and love. A pastor once said, Jesus' death is the death of your death. And Jesus' life is the resurrection of your life. Jesus. We have life in Jesus, peace in Jesus, salvation in Jesus. We have everything in Jesus. And what happened to Lazarus is going to happen to Jesus as well. He will be crucified and die and will be buried in a tomb. And not on the fourth day, but the third day, Jesus will rise again to live. His victory is our victory. Our sin has been paid for. Death has been defeated. And we are free now to live the new life in Jesus Christ because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Amen.